Fantastic to be here this morning. Oh, I don't know about you, but that worship was... That's, that's why we come, guys. So we can enter his courts with praise and move from the praise to the holy of holies into his presence. Oh, it was special. And the last couple of weeks have been special, actually. So, Steve, thank you for inspiring us, encouraging us to go deeper this morning. Worship team as well. Thank you, guys. Sure, that was really good. Can I have a show of hands just quickly? Who was at the conference? Ah, oh, great number of you. Fantastic. If you weren't there for any reason, please, I encourage you guys to get the YouTube video or whatever. It was so, so good. The way I could describe it is like, Meat and potatoes. And then gravy on top, you know? It was just so rich with power and the Word of God and just loved it. I don't know about anybody else, but I was just... My title to my message this morning is Heirs and Co-Heirs with Christ. Heirs and co-heirs with Christ. We have the privilege of being heirs and co-heirs with Christ. Can I just pray? Father God, not Wayne's word this morning, but your words. Holy Spirit, would you come and lead me? Would you come and guide me? Would you come and deliver your message this morning that each heart would be impacted and each heart would be touched by you this morning, Lord God? Amen. Start off by reading Matthew 28. So encouraged this word was, this Matthew 28 was mentioned yesterday, so I was really encouraged when you're preparing to preach and somebody mentions the same scripture that you are, you are studying and looking at. It encourages you, and I'm really encouraged to see it mentioned yesterday. And it says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Isn't it true that some of us doubt? Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority, I'm going to say it again, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Isn't that a powerful scripture? And it's the scripture that Jesus left left us with before he departed. So I would think that it carries weight and it carries importance. It's powerful. And it's our mandate as a church to go. That's why we go. We go out into the community. We go into the valley. We go to the nations. We go. Because we want to share the word of God. We want to share what God has given us to others who have not heard. That is why we go. And we teach people. We disciple them to obey everything that God has commanded And he's with us to the very end of the age. Isn't that powerful? It's fantastic. Going back to heirs and co-heirs. All of us have had a a thought somewhere. We wish that we had an uncle or, or a rich family member that you didn't know about. And one day you'd get a call, you know. Ring, ring, pick up. <laughs> um, and it's a lawyer, and he says to you, your great uncle Bob has just passed away. And he has left his whole inheritance to you. Land, houses, cars, a bank account, all yours. I want to tell you believers today, Because we are heirs and co-heirs with Christ, that is you. All of heaven. Everything that our Father in heaven has, we have. 
But do we believe that? Some doubt it. Maybe there's some doubters amongst us. And we all doubt time from time to time. But we are heirs and co-heirs with Christ. And then we, got, we journey with Him. And it's so wonderful to journey with Him. So powerful to journey with Him. It says in Romans eight seventeen. Now if we are children, then we are heirs of God. And co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his suffering in order that we also may share in his glory. That explains why we go through tough times. All of us can can say we've gone through tough times. But we are sharing in everything that Christ has gone through. We share, but we also share in the good times. It's a privilege to walk with God. It's a privilege to be able to share the gospel. It's a privilege to be an heir and a co-heir with Christ. And I want to demonstrate something this morning, and I'm going to ask some people to come up here this morning. Roger, would you come? Where's Ross? Come on, Ross, come and join me. And where's the Thrive team? Can you guys come up here quickly? <laughs> and Roger, would you stand over here? J- uh, Ross, would you stand over here? And the Thrive team, would you, would you guys stand down there? Quickly, guys, come quick, quickly. Don't be embarrassed. I'm not going to embarrass you, I promise you. <laughs> uh, there's a few other Thrivers hiding, but we'll leave them there. for the, This is good enough for the moment. So um, I said I need a prop this morning, and Roger said, no, he's not a prop. He's a flank. <laughs> but I want... I want Roger to represent God the Father today. He's a father in the house. He's a father in his home. And he is going to represent God the Father. Yes, he is. <laughs> Who do you think? This, is, this guy is. <laughs> no, not because of how you look. It's because of your heart. <laughs> and here we have the co The Father. Who has all authority, passes all authority onto Jesus, his son. All authority was given at the Garden of Eden to Adam and Eve, but we know they fell, and that authority handed over to Satan. But Jesus came along and took back that authority. And he not only took it back, but he passed it on to us as co-heirs. All of us. Every one of us. And I could go around the whole room and touch every head here. Thank you, guys. Give them a hand. (laughs) Thank you, guys. The authority has been passed on to us. It was lost, but it has been regained and passed on to us, being co-heirs with Christ. I want to move on to speaking a little bit about authority. You can only give authority if you have authority. I can't go to the the shop and buy a police uniform, put it on and then start marching around and telling people what to do in my purchased police uniform. People would soon see that I am a a false policeman or a, a renegade or personator, correct, yeah. But if I went to police college and I went through the training and I wrote the exams and I endured the hardship of being trained and went through everything that you need to do to become a policeman. There comes a day when I pass the course. I've passed all the physical tests and everything that I need to do. And then there comes a day where there's an award ceremony. I actually receive a badge or an award or something. And the state then says, We give you authority 
to be a policeman and to uphold the law in our land. Which means, if a thief is running down the road, that policeman with his authority can chase after him, catch him, and put handcuffs on him. That policeman has the authority to do that. I mean, we could do the same, but he has the authority to arrest him and take him to prison. But a false person dressed up would soon be recognized as false. Lost my train of thought for a second. You cannot give authority if you haven't got authority to give. But our God has all authority and he's given it to the Son and he's passed it on to us as co-heirs. Jesus has authority. He has authority over death, sickness, disease, the brokenhearted, the wind and the waves, darkness, and there's so much more that he has authority over. As for me, I'm a husband. I'm the head of my home, and I have authority over my home. And as a believer, I'm always checking that we, as me and my wife, are always checking that godly things are happening in our home. That we are bringing our children up in the ways of the Lord. And the moment things are out of order, we like to take authority over that and bring back the order. I want to say to you, husbands, take authority over your home. When you feel like things are not going the way they should be, Take authority over your home. Take authority when things don't seem right. Have you ever wondered, like, the washing machine will break, the gate will break, everything will break, all, everything will break at the same time. It never happens spread out. It always happens in the month that you've got the highest bills. Isn't that true? It's an attack on your finances, possibly. It could just be life, and that happens, but it could be an attack on your finances. Husbands, take authority over that. And if you're a single mom today, you are the head of your home. You can also take authority. As believers, we can take authority. We can take authority over things. When we see that it doesn't conform to the pattern that God has shown us in Scripture, we can take authority over it. If sickness comes into your house or your home, take authority over us. My children know if they get sick, first thing you ought to do, not visit the doctor, take authority of it. I refuse to be sick. Push the sickness back. Take authority over it. Hey, Ryan. <laughs> take authority over it. We have that authority. You can take it back. Can I ask you to say, I have authority this morning. I have authority. I have authority over things in my home. Let the status quo not be that things are running out of control, but you take control. There are times in my, in my home where I have to stay up a bit later when everybody else has gone to bed and I have to kind of march up and down the passageway, just praying in tongues possibly because I don't really know what I need to be praying, but I know that I'm, I'm fighting a spiritual battle and I need to win that battle. Perhaps there's something going on sickness-wise I'm just praying, Lord Jesus, would you come and touch every family member, every, every person in my home that's suffering with sickness, just taking authority over it, marching up and down. And sometimes it just might be something you just know that there's something not right is in, your, in your home. You're not sure what it is, but you just take authority and you start marching up and down, praying over every area of your home, your children, your future, your finances, your everything. You're just taking authority. This year, guys, I really believe that God is wanting to increase our authority as Hillside. We've had a prophetic word of, regarding that. But for, in order us to do that and to take that extra authority that God is wanting to put on us, we have to stand that authority. We need to know where it comes from. We need to know how to use that authority. Because misused authority is not good. Controlling people or overuse of authority was also not good. 
We want to use it the way God has intended it to be used. <laughs> While I was preparing, I saw this funny picture. And because we doubt sometimes, we believe we have authority, but sometimes we doubt and we kind of fumble a little bit. And I had this funny picture as I was preparing of a policeman running after a thief and then suddenly stopping, go, am I a policeman? <laughs> oh, yes, I am. And he charges after him. No, no, I'm not a policeman. Yes, I, yes, I am. And he chases off. And we can do that as believers, guys. We can do that. God says, go pray for that person. And we, oh, no, we aren't, we're going to pray. Oh, no, I'm, I'm a bit scared or I'm a bit doubtful. And we, we stop. No, but you have authority. You can go. Go, you go again, you know. Don't doubt. Don't doubt, guys. We have the authority to pray for people. God is with us. God is for us. We heard that many times this morning in the worship. Just God is with us. He's for us. He's behind us. He's given us authority. Let's not be like the policeman who doubts whether he's a policeman or not. Or let's be those believers who are filled up, who, are, who know their position in Christ. And when God gives an assignment to do, no matter, matter how big or small it is, that we take that assignment, we, we run with it, we do it to the best of our ability without doubting. If we have doubted, and all of us have, just acknowledge that you've done doubted. Make right with God. Clear the slates. And don't sit back and say, well, I can't do that, or I'm backing off what God's got for me because I doubt it. No. Let's make that right. The, th the second thing of being a co heir and a co-heir with Christ is understanding that you're a son or daughter of Christ. Now, the enemy is really after this at the moment in our society, you know. He's kind of added some stuff and made it all confusing. But we sons and daughters of Christ. And as sons and daughters, we have privileges. I'm going to use Steve here. Steve, you don't mind, eh? <laughs> Steve is a tetter. His father is Roger. He has privileges as a son in the tetter home. Yeah, I don't, I, <laughs> he has a remote to get in the gate. Right. Get a key to the front door. Am I right? That's, that's right. That's right. You got access to the fridge, or you had access to the no, fridge. No, I'm not sorry. Still, 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 still does. Still, okay. I bring my Tupperware when I'm. <laughs> <laughs> so when you are a son in the house. You have privileges. You can run and jump on the couch, probably. I wouldn't be able to do that. Tanya would sort me out, you know. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. But as a son in the house, you have privileges. Access to the fridge. Access to the father as well. Like I couldn't just come open the gate, kick the door open. Hey, Rog, how's it, man? I'd have to go there, ring the bell. Hello, I'm Swain here. Can I visit? You know, I remember it's a bad time now. Wayne, go away. You know, come back another day. <laughs> you wouldn't do that, but um, as a son, you have this privilege. Run and jump onto the couch, no problem. I remember going to a friend's house when I was younger, and he, he'd run his house and jump on the couch. And I tried that, and I got sorted out. You know, <laughs> you, can't, you can't do that when you're not a son in the house have to be a son to have these privileges and we as sons and daughters of the king have these privileges God has got privileges for us he's got things for us let's not lose out on those things let's run after God let's, let's learn, let's be discipled let's go after God and find those things that he has for every single one of us Are you a son? Are you a daughter of God? Ask yourself that today. I believe that um, Satan, if he can confuse your understanding of being a son or a daughter, he can rob from you. And that is his job, to rob, kill, and destroy. He wants to take from you. He wants to confuse you. He wants to rob, kill, and destroy but if you understand who you are as a son, you have authority over him. 
Does that make sense? I'm Wayne Hardman. I'm son of Mike and Rose Hardman. But I'm also a son of the living God. And when the enemy comes and he says, I'm going to take from you. I said, excuse me. I'm a son of the living God. You know who my father is. Do you know who my father is? I take authority over the situation. I don't allow the enemy to come in and just plunder whatever. I just take a stand. He's given us armor. He's given us things that we can take a stand against the enemy. And one of the things that we can take a stand is knowing that we're sons and daughters. And me as a father, I would protect my family. And any fathers here, anybody here, would, you would protect your children. You would stand in the gap for them. You would take authority over something that came to threaten your family. Am I right? We are sons and daughters of a king. But we are also adopted. Did you know that? Ephesians 1 verse 4 says, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy, blameless in his sight. Before creation. He knew you. He had an assignment for you before you were even created. Before your parents were created, before your ancestors were created, he knew you. I found that incredible. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the ones he loves. Isn't that powerful, guys? We're adopted. All of us. It doesn't matter your color where you come from, what side of the tracks you grew up on. We're just all of us. Green, pink, yellow, black, white, orange, whatever. We are all adopted sons and daughters of the king. Mel and I have adopted a little girl whose birthday it was this week, Bella. She was abandoned in the streets of Durban. My wife had a heart for years to adopt. I wasn't on board for quite a while. But one day she said to me, I, something changed in me. And I said, okay, babe, let's, let's adopt. And um, I think that day she had me at the adoption agency filling out papers. She was ready. She knew. The moment my husband says, yes, I'm going to have him there, before he changes his mind, perhaps, you know. And we, we went through the process of being vetted and filling out forms and so forth, and then the day came where we met Bella. And she had been named Zintle. Where's a Zulu? What does Zintle mean? Beautiful. We didn't know that. Guess what we named Bella? Bella. Bella. <laughs> and what does Bella mean? Beautiful. Beautiful. And this was a big decision for us as a family. So I said, Lord, I need, I need a sign that this is, this is from you. I need a button. You know a button from a shirt? As a sign that, that we're doing the right thing. I go to the adoption agency to fill out one last form, and I had to get something out the boot of my car. And as I opened my car boot and I looked down, guess what I found? A button. I still got that button. In that time, I just knew. And adoption is a, an incredible thing. It's a journey, and there's many folk who here in this church have adopted. I want to tell you, it's not an easy ride to adopt, but God has adopted all of us. And some of us are not an easy ride. <laughs> it's a couple of goats amongst the sheep, you know? <laughs> But God has got us on a journey and he's adopted us. Before the creation of the world, he saw you and he said, Bob, Fred, or George, these are the assignments I have for you. Before the creation of the world, 
He knew you. Every one of us has got something. Every single one of us has got something that God has got for us to do. And all of us doubt that sometimes. But I want to encourage you, Hillside Church, let us not doubt this year. Let us remind ourselves that we are is and co is with Christ. Let us remind ourselves that we are sons and daughters of a king. Let us remind ourselves that we are adopted as sons and daughters and that we have authority. We have a task to do, church. We have people to reach, our neighbors, our friends. We have beyond Hillcrest, we have people to touch and impact. And for order us to do that, we need to understand who we are. We are the sons and daughters of a king, King Jesus, who died for us, who set us free, who took back that authority that was lost when Adam and Eve fell. And that authority has been given back to us. Can we remind ourselves that we have this authority? Can we remind ourselves of our position we have in Christ? Does that make sense, guys, this morning? Has it reminded you of what we need to do? Has it enthused you this morning? When you're feeling alone, when you're feeling defeated, can you remind yourself that there's one who stands there going, I didn't create you to be defeated. I didn't create you to be worried. Can you find your strength again by going back to the Father and just reminding him, asking him to remind you of who you are and how dangerous you are? <laughs> Some of you are dangerous. You just don't realize how dangerous you are. Some of you are powerful. I'm talking about in the kingdom now, not um, physically, yeah? <laughs> Some of you are powerful. Some of me might think, well, I, I can't speak out. I can't talk. But in other areas, you are powerful because God has given you authority in that area. Some of you in the workplace are just shining lights in that place. You might be the only shining light. All of us understand when load shedding kicks in, it goes dark. It just takes one light to right, lights up the room, am I right? So if you feel like you're the only Christian in your office and you're not making a difference, I want to say no. In the darkness, you are a shining light. And you might be persecuted. But I want to tell you that so was our Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, is persecuted. You may think, well, I have no idea what God has called me to. Well, that's why you've got this big community here. And we can try and help you, you know. We can disciple you. We can show you. And perhaps by attending one of the courses we have or, or joining a home group, suddenly something clicks one day and you realize, that's what God has called me to do. Does that make sense? I want to tell you guys, Hillside Church, we have some things to do this year. We have some ground to take. We have an increased authority in this area of Hillcrest. And each and every one of us has a part to play. Because the sum of a whole lot of small movements by each person turns out to be a massive, gigantic step for the kingdom. So you may not be doing something massive, like leading a crusade or something, but in your office you're speaking to one person or your neighbor. You just reach over the fence and have a conversation that you see somebody in trouble, you just help them. I don't, I don't know what it could be, but a sum of a whole lot of good things done by us as believers can turn things, can shift things.